Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Parlay Revival. We've got a really exciting day for you today because a rigger is coming and he's going to tune our rig for us. Yeah mate, we'll have a look over it and uh, get the tensions right I think and uh, yeah, let's get into it man. Uh, he's been a surveyor for like 20 years, a rigger for like 14. So he's going to teach us how to tune it without putting too much pressure on the bulkheads because we now know that that is probably one of the biggest causes of people having bulkhead issues. If you've only just joined us on this channel, we had broken bulkheads. It took 10 months to fix them. We re-glassed them all with epoxy. It was a major, major job. So once he's finished tuning the rig, we're actually gonna to go to sea to tune the rig. Once he's finished, we're gonna put a string line on the back of the boat and just see how bent parlay is because there was 40 millimeters of deflection along the aft deck when we found the broken bulkheads. So with the reinforced bulkheads and the rig tuned, That'll be Parlay's final resting position and we'll see what we're dealing with. Let's go. By the way, to all of our patrons out there that are watching, uh, please check your not notifications this week because we're gonna be announcing the two winners who we are gonna invite through the Panama Canal with us. So super exciting stuff. Make sure you check your Patreon notifications. We'll be pulling the winners next Sunday. These are really slack. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. As they should be. The difference You'll feel it. You'll feel it. I'll show you. It's just, I mean, it's, it's not difficult to figure it out. And trust your instincts. I would recommend, and you've already seen what happens when we trust gauges and what have you. Yeah. I would recommend you trust your instincts. They're, they're much more reliable than a mechanical gauge. So, the parts that you really will be watching for are these parts. Yeah. You're looking particularly for this part, top yeah. and bottom. Yeah. I'm looking for any sign that one of these might be starting to part. Now, it's always the outer ones part before the inner ones. Yeah. So you won't be surprised uh, in that respect. G'day mate! Eric, you're looking well, you put on a bit of weight. Oh, that's what it is! <laughs> good, good cooking from the relatives! A rigger, really, uh, is just somebody who's done a bit of rigging. It's not a super trade in many respects, it's very much common sense. And any of you guys could be a rigger after today. Really? <laughs> really. Okay, a bit of experience is useful too. In fact, a few years of it is a good thing. But uh, <laughs> and you should not be afraid to tackle it. And you should always remember that if something looks wrong, it's wrong. Okay, so my next step then is to be hoisted aloft. Who's the lucky fellow who gets to hoist 200 pounds of me up and down? <laughs> Your halyards tend to have a couple of thousand pounds breaking. It's very unlikely that you'll drop me. If, if I'm wrong, I won't know much about it. <laughs> <laughs> So we're hoisting Mike up by hand. It's killing us. It's killing we, him, it's not killing me. I've got this. Do this in my sleep. We partied last night, he went to bed. <laughs> but we got to give him one of these. At the boat show. It's called an Ewincher. That's the battery. Maybe it's not the best time to test it when <laughs> someone's up there. Oh, you got a, you got a clutch? Hang on one second. <laughs> I'll listen out for his yells. <laughs> We've got the tough job here. Hey Lindo. Okay. I go down now. Alright. So I have his life in my hands right now. Sure There's no do. safer way to do this? Nope. <laughs> I'm not going up. Your rig's good. You have nothing wrong with any of your swages, shrouds. They're as perfect as we can tell them to be at this stage. Gotcha. Okay. We know they don't last forever, but right now they're good for a trip across the Pacific if that's what you plan. Yeah. So that's what you need to know. So at least you're not spending any money on those right now. And all we're doing now it's just taking a bit of the slack out of it before we go onto the water and watch what the rig actually does there. Right. Yes, there are some finer points. Now, you feel that, made quite a difference. Okay, yeah. we'll go and do the same to the other side. Is it better to go a little tighter or a little looser for the, you know what I mean? It's better to be where it should be. Uh, <laughs> we're just going to see what actually happens and how rigid the boat is, uh, which will, of course, also. Um, give you an idea of uh, exactly where you've been with your furniture rebuilding. <laughs> the, blunt, the, the blunt truth of the matter is though that no matter what you have done, you cannot have made a rigid boat. 
No. Not possible to do this. No. You have probably uh, ground away half a ton of stuff has disappeared in powder. You may actually have made uh, some positive difference in other ways as well that you might not expect. Yeah. yeah. It but already sounds quieter just from bobbing about yesterday. Yeah. The boat creaks less. There's your answer. The boat talks to you. So, uh, if you would, stick your thing in there. Yeah. Figure you freeze that. <laughs> so far we've discovered that the rigging is in good condition, and now we've just got to get it into good tune. And as I say, we're, what we're doing now is just a bit of bulk tightening. There's nothing, no finesse in this. You're getting a good workout today, boys. What made you consider, Dave, that your boat might have the same problem? Did you have a few doors that wouldn't open? I've been watching his videos forever. That's why I bought the boat in the first place. Long story short, I got a big discount, went back to it and thought it wasn't that big of a deal. Bought the boat and found out it was actually... That big a deal. Yeah. Okay, we've got enough rig and tension now to actually sail uh, without damaging anything, bending anything or anything like that. But what I would like to do now is just see exactly where it does what. Okay? Oh. Because what I don't want to do is undo all your good works. And it's possible to do that. You can you can completely screw the boat up with this rig. It's quite strong enough. It's a very it's very very good stuff. Okay, I'll just get the ass over. Yeah, mate. The wind, of course, is working against you today. Okay, so we've just pushed off the dock, and we're going to go put some sails up and then see what's happening with this rigging with with wind in the sails. If I wrote you a song, if I got every word. Perfectly weighted on a thin piece of paper. Would it make any difference? Would it change for the better? If I wrote you a poem, if I posted a Baby, <laughs> we're sailing. Engines are off. Don't look too excited. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> we'll just go and have a look at the leeward trail. Perfect. Yeah. But we're actually not far away already. That, did, that wasn't hard, was it? It's slack, but you don't want it a lot tighter. It's got to have a little movement. It's right. a cat. Remember that. What we need is enough shroud tension that the lee shrouds don't waggle around at the point of fatigue. What you will encounter is conditions where things are really, really hard, much tougher than today, obviously. Yeah. These will get, these will feel bar tight. Yeah. And those will feel slack. Yeah. Those are the days where you might take an extra turn in that. Yeah. Do a tack and take an extra turn in this. However, we do know that we can take a bit of slack out of this, and we do know that we should take a bit of slack out of this as well. Yep. And here is the point. We don't want to be levering our boat apart. The leverage, I mean, this is a very wide boat, and the leverage is huge. And then we've got these these little threads here, which are a tremendous lever. Yeah. And I mean, we can tighten this and tighten this, and we can, if we want to today, we can certainly destroy all the work that you and your mates have done to this boat. It would be easy to do. You know, if you can show this to other lagoon owners, just let them know it's not difficult. When you get a bit of a breeze, keep an eye on the force day. Yeah. And if there's a bit of a bow in that, take some of that out with the cap shrouds. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. The uh, rigidity that you've added to the boat is working because they're not shaking around. Yeah. We just got the port side good. We're going to go tighten the cap shrouds on the starboard. Time, brother? I think you're doing quite well. Good. Back and forth, back and forth. We're back over on the port side now. Yes. We can only do a quarter turn at a time while balancing precariously. Okay, it'll be, it'll be. Yeah? No blood? Not yet. You obviously haven't worked them hard enough. Okay. That's the look right there when you got hit by lightning. 
You're looking up from the sky. Right there, that's it, I remember that. Oh, pretty sure we got struck. The fucking VHF antenna is not there. Cast the uh, camera up and down the mast, you will see that it's now straight. Straight? Straight. As a straight mast. Okay, and now tension's certainly about right for today. It may be that you add a little bit more tension, but feel the relative tensions of the stays now. But they should be, on this boat, it would seem ideally for them to be about the same tension. Okay, let's just grab a little bit. Thanks so much, Mike. Nothing, mate. And a cold one? Yep, I've deserved it now. Yeah. 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 Stop. I'm helping you. I think I'm okay again. It's like waves. But it's... What's the verdict on the rigging? Okay, well your rigging is set up roughly. Yeah. I will say roughly. Uh, it's probably just that little bit too slack, but it is always better to go from slack to a little firmer than the other way around. Not just because of the damage aspect, but for lots of other aspects. At some point you're going to do that anyway and you'll see for yourself. The amount of extra glass that you've put, and I've been watching your videos, so I've know, I know what you've been doing, and I've been here in person to see what you've been doing. Yeah. Uh, the amount of extra glass that, uh, that you put onto these things is a good thing. You have a coefficient that is more equivalent to what the hull mouldings are. The hull mouldings on these boats are excellent, really, really good. Uh, the rigs on these boats are really, really good as well. Right. They haven't uh, skimped in that, but you know, the basic rig is not a big proportion of the boat in terms of cost, and the hull is near to nothing in terms of proportion of the cost of this yeah. boat. And that's particularly true if we're turning out one every few days uh, from the same set of moulds over and over and over again. Mm. It will make a difference, obviously, as to what number boat yours is, because most of the time, as they're turning out boats, they get better and better at turning them over, at turning them out. And it's obvious that Lagoon, having heard a little of the history of these 45s from owners, from you guys, uh, the likelihood is that they've made some changes already. So future 45s will benefit from your discoveries, no question about that. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that Lagoon uh, should be relying so much on wooden reinforcement in a fiberglass boat. I think that's wrong. But in my opinion at this stage is that people need to re reinforce this bulkhead. How long have you been a surveyor for? Surveyor for about 20 years. Uh, rigor really only since I came to Panama. 14 years. Yeah, 14 years. <laughs> so as a, sorry, as a surveyor, um, how does this boat survey? The work uh, that as good, if not better than uh, any lagoon I've looked at. And I mean any lagoon, not just lagoon 45s. And are you happy with the way that we did the sugar Yes, sauce? I am. Uh, I'm very happy with what you've done. I've observed that you guys tended to learn a few things the hard way, uh, and it's quite probable that there's nothing I could have told you to change your mind. But, <laughs> but, but the ultimate truth is that you did it right, and uh, there are a couple of things I noted that you were prepared to do twice, and you did. So uh, you have my admiration for that, because it's not the easiest of jobs. It's a dirty, smelly, dusty job. Yeah. It's actually quite quiet for a lagoon, yeah. and I'm delighted with it. I reiterate though for other lagoon owners, you David, for anyone else who might own a lagoon, that these noises aren't necessarily sent by the god of boat builders to plague us, but rather they are a boat talking to you. Boats do talk to you. And they're telling you what's going on, what's moving, what's moving against such things. The things to watch for in boats like this are the doors closing. Yeah. I don't know how many times I've said to you, have you checked your doors, are they closing all right? With the bulkhead broke here and the hulls came up, um, these doors would hit. I can't remember if it was up there or down there, but they wouldn't close properly. Now that we've straightened the boat and the rig is now retentioned, this gap is just perfectly parallel. So, can't be much happy with that. Thank you so much, Mike. Happy to have done it, guys. <laughs> happy to have done it. So there we go, guys. Mike Barker. He just has a wealth of knowledge. So it was just an absolute pleasure and a privilege to have him on board. And he took so much time to just explain everything to us as well, which was amazing. But guys, this just shows you the importance of not over-tensioning your rig if you're on a catamaran. There's just so much force on those shrouds and so, the force is coming from so wide out that 
If you over tension them, you're going to be putting unnecessary force on these bulkheads. There's no point in them being so tight. I'm fully convinced that that is the proper way to tune the rig on a catamaran because anything other than that is unnecessary. So I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on that. There's one more thing we need to do, which I haven't done yet. Now that the rig is tight, we need to just see how much the, the catamaran is actually, actually bent. And we're gonna do that by doing the old string line test across the back of the boat. Lagoon have come out and said 20 millimeters of deflection is acceptable. My personal opinion, and it is only my opinion, is that it's way too much. When you have 20 millimeters of deflection, that's when you get doors not closing, you get cupboards jamming up, uh, you get cracks all over the flybridge area. So many Lagoon 450s have these cracks in the flybridge. It's because the boat's bending too much. But anyway, let's go check to see how bent this boat is now. So if you can just hold one end of this. Remember that when we straighten the boat, uh, we put the pylons under the bridge deck, let the weight of the hulls just bring themselves down. Um, we got this completely level. It was just flat across the whole aft deck here. So now that we've put the boat in the water and tensioned up the rig, I'm almost guaranteed there's gonna be some bend in it. But if there's more than five or six millimeters, then, then I'll be concerned. But up to that, I think it's perfectly normal. There should be a bit of flex in the boat. Excuse me, McFly. Get back. Okay, so Lean, you're gonna just go, you're just gonna hold it down in exactly the same place. You're gonna use your thumb and hold it down on the deck. Just in front of these hinges. And we'll pull it, uh, come back a little bit, Lean, in line with this. Yeah, and then we'll hold it really nice and tight. Okay, you're 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 on the you're on the corner, mm -hmm. and then uh, Jake, you're going to be able to tell us what what's going on there. Yeah, we're sitting just under five. Just under five millimeters. Correct. There you go, guys. Remember, when we hauled out, or right before we hauled this boat out, when our rig was still tight and we were in the water, we had forty millimeters of deflection. So the boat was like a banana and it's because we had cracks on both sides of the bulkheads all of this just went up like that and uh, we've got these cracks all over the boat now that everything is repaired every single bulkhead is now reinforced and we've basically rebuilt the main mast bulkhead um, we've got five millimeters of deflection pretty happy with that any questions people want to get a hold of you but Need some rigging or okay, uh, done. what's the best way? I have an email which is long and complex of course. Marine scene, one word, dot marina, because I'm a marina builder too. Marine scene dot marina at gmail.com. Alright, I'll leave the so link in the description. Yeah. So that's me guys. Yeah. Happy to help.